Hello everyone, Skids here and welcome to episode 24 of Scar Mouse Weekly. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. First mod I have for you is called Skyrim Landscape Overhaul by CO331 aka Privata. This mod overhauls the detail and number of static items in the world to give it a more 3D and realistic feeling and it also fixes some bugs such as wrong placements of objects. The first thing I have to say is that finding places that were changed by this overhaul is kinda hard since I don't have the Skyrim landscape memorized and so I'm not 100% sure every shot you can see here is modded but the places I'm 100% sure were changed looked pretty good and the landscape now just feels a lot more filled and less empty than it was in vanilla game so for example in White Tron Tundra you can now see a lot more rocks and Stonehenge like uh, structures that make the landscape look a lot better. In the Riverwood Forest you can now see a lot more tree stumps that also kind of fill the forest and make it look a little bit bigger. And in Falkreath Forest you can see more dead branches and fallen trees. Lake Yorgrim is now frozen and there is a broken ice in the middle of it and in near docks. In northern areas there is now a lot more broken ice and lots of smaller details that make it really look like a cold country that is located at north. There are also a few more changes that you can read on map page, but I'm not sure if I found all of these because like I said it is hard to move around Skyrim it, if it was not overhauled completely and only a few parts were overhauled and it was kinda hard to look for those specific places. So then as you can guess when you will log on to your game for first time you will probably not notice any change but when you will move to those locations I mentioned you will definitely notice some big changes because especially the white Tron tundra now feels a lot less empty and it certainly has a better feeling than the vanilla version because now there are rocks everywhere it has kind of those structures like I said and it really feels a lot better and then I also like the, the frozen lake that you can now move on because that is a quite a huge change I'm not sure if it was frozen in vanilla but now it is and it certainly looks a lot better and like I said you will generally not notice those changes unless you move to locations but when you will go there those changes will be significant. Now the mod is compatible with almost every other mod out there but you should still check out the comment section where you can see the list of the compatible mods or the mods that people asked for and were incompatible or compatible you can just check out the comment section of the mod and you will see if your if your desired mod is compatible or not. But generally I really did enjoy this mod, even though it is not one of the biggest overhauls out there, it makes some of the empty places of Skyrim a lot more better and I definitely recommend it. Next up we have Shard of Oblivion by Mika999. This mod adds a whole new location into your game. As you can guess from its name, it's a new realm of Oblivion. Now this mod is still a work in progress, so so far it is not fully polished or there are no quests or any storyline for it, there are just, you know, locations out there and there are a few enemies there, but uh, I really did enjoy Matthew's work and so I decided to feature it. So you can find entrance to this realm in Abandoned Mine, just west of Old Roldan, and after you reach it you will see that it is really a lot different than any location that Skyrim has to offer. Now first thing you should do is install and Sumber EMB or the Grim EMB because the, then the sky will not be as red as it is supposed to be and it will probably be a little bit too dark like it was in my game because I did not have those EMBs installed because they did not work for me and I can't work with them when I want to record and so I just stick with Photoreal EMB that I was using before but it still looked pretty good and I really did enjoy the atmosphere of this realm so far there is not really much to explore, there are maybe like 5 or 6 significant locations but I really did enjoy it, there are some new cool enemies out there, the locations look pretty good, if there was some kind of cool storyline for them I would really enjoy it, because I can see some, you know, I have some potential ideas for quests that could be made here, you know, and the locations look really nice, I especially like the Molag Baal statue or the that place where there are Atronax fighting or the eternal fight scene that you can see right now. And I can see that Matter is taking this mod in the right direction. And I'm really looking forward to the final release because even right now this mod is pretty great. I really did enjoy all the new locations. The atmosphere is great, the now meshing works, the, my follower was following me all the time. And I really did not found any bugs whatsoever. Only small bug that happened to me is that I crashed when I 
reach the fortress near the eternal battle. So I'm not sure if that was a problem on my side or if that part is just not finished yet, but I still think that the map is pretty amazing. I'm not even sure if I found all the interesting locations. Like I said, atmosphere is great, new custom enemies look great as well, as well as all the new locations and I'm really looking forward to the quest line and the full risk of this map, but even right now I recommend it for some nice exploration. Moving on, I've got three small mods for you that don't uh, make an extreme change to gameplay but I still decided to include them because I still think they are really interesting. The first one is Weighted Breakdown by Grantis. This mod will allow you to break down your weapons and armors at Smelter or Tanning Rack without using any recipes or additional content because this mod does not rely on recipes but rather relies on keywords to break down the items. So as you can see on screen right now when I move to Tanning Rack I can now select breakdown items and now I can just, you know, type, uh, I can just move any armor from my inventory to, you could say, tanning rack inventory and then the little menu will appear and there you can see what will you get for the breakdown and then you can break down the item. You can also disable this menu and make the breakdown go automatically but I would not really recommend that because, you know, you wanna know what you will get for your breakdown and for your item that you want to destroy. Now I found this mod very useful because if you are overloaded with useless stuff and you don't want to sell it because it has low value or the vendor does not have any money this mod can be really useful because then you can use the things you gain to create another maybe stronger items or stuff like that and I really did enjoy this mod like I said it is not an extreme gameplay changer but it is still a nice little feature that can help you in your game mod also requires Skyrim script extender and Skyu to work and it also has a mod configuration menu where you can set few settings second small mod I have for you is called Color Map Markers by Lass. As you can guess from its name, this mod will make map markers colored. There are two versions of this mod. First, the simple one will only mark the big towns on your map with the blue color and also your location in orange one and the location of your objectives with green one. And then you have also second version that will color all of your markers with different colors for different category. For example, the big towns will be at blue colors, homesteads or any other villages will be with yellow color, then the shrines and stormcloak and imperial camps are with red color, usual tombs and watchtowers are with uh, purple color, and then the bandit camps and giant camps are with brown color. Now, I personally prefer the multicolored one because now when the map markers are divided into different color categories I can orient on the map a lot easier but I know that some people may be annoyed by it and for those I think that the second version is amazing as well because it highlights your location, your objects location and all the big towns and so we will always know where you're basically located and where is the nearest town without you searching for it and you still don't get a lot of color clutter like, I, like you will get with the second colored version that I prefer. But like I said for me orientation on the map is now a lot easier. I now have no problems with finding any locations I want to visit. I definitely recommend this bot for anyone who is in the same situation like me and he just can't orient around the map. And the third small mod I have for you is called Enchanting Candle Meshes Improved by Lean Wolf. This mod improves the meshes of candles that are located at the enchanting table or at any dining table you can encounter in Skyrim. Now in my game I didn't notice any big changes because I think I'm using a retexture project but when you look at the screenshots in the mod the difference is really really big. As you can see on screen right now the transition between wax and candles in vanilla Skyrim looks kinda weird, it is really blocky and just generally doesn't look very good. Well, with this mod on it is nicely rounded and it looks it just looks more natural and candles now don't stick out in any weird way. This mod includes meshes only so like I said it works with any retexture you have. But uh, like in my game the changes may not be so big then because the texture itself may already fix these problems. And the mod also includes the retextures for enchanting workbench plus load screen art model enchanting workstation, disenchanting workbench that is available in some mods and rounder candles that you can find at dining tables. Like I said, this is a small mod but it will make your visual experience in Skyrim a lot better, especially if you use enchanting table a lot. Now let's take a look at armor mod of this week. It is called Fluffy Travel Attire by Kalilies. You can obtain it by crafting it at any forge under leather category. It includes vests, a pair of pants, a fur collier, a pair of boots and a pair of gauntlets. Now as you can see on screen, this attire is not your typical Skyrim mod outfit, 
because it, to my surprise, doesn't expose three quarters of your character's body. And it really looks realistic and lore friendly. Now, as you can see, it comes with custom textures and mall. The textures are not the most HD ones I saw in my career as Skyrim reviewer. But they still look pretty good and they have some nice details on them, I like the full color, that one looks really good and also some straps on the torso and the pants doesn't look bad as well, so yeah I like them. The model is great as well because like I said it fully covers your character and it really looks like an armor that your character could take out in the wild and be protected by it while still staying warm in cold environment like in High Hradgar and for example if you're using Frostfall this outfit is perfect for that. Another thing I liked is that it still manages to look very feminine and it doesn't look like something a male could wear and I think that this armor really found the perfect balance between realistic, lore friendly and feminine armor. One thing you should also know is that it requires Dungar DLC or else you will have some missing textures in first person. This armor is also meant to wear as whole because uh, otherwise you will get some missing parts like hands or legs depending on which part of the armor you will decide to replace. So like I said, very very good, realistic and lore friendly looking female armor that I definitely recommend for anyone who is tired of those armors we are usually getting. And the last mod I have for you today is called Iron Short Sword by Ketelwich. This mod adds a new weapon into the game. You can obtain it by crafting it at Forge under Iron category. As always, Ketelwich did an amazing job. This mod comes with custom textures and model. The texture job is superb, I have to say, I really did enjoy the texture job. I especially like a little bit of scratches and uh, kind of not rust, but you know, you know what I'm saying. You can see it on a picture, the kind of that stuff right there. I also really enjoyed the emblem that is near the handle. The handle looked great as well, it kind of had a unique shape, I did not really saw that kind of shape before and I generally really did enjoy the model and textures, they both look amazing. And like I said, I really did enjoy the handle, the more I look at it, the more I like it because the that shape is really unique and I would love to see some more unique handle shaped swords out there, wow. With a new word I invented right there. Anyhow, in terms of statistics, it's about as strong as steel sword, a little bit lighter and faster than iron sword, and it has a slightly reduced reach. So it is the perfect starter sword for anyone who is just starting a new game. When I tested it in combat in Oblivion Realm, it was really not that extremely powerful, so yeah, it is really uh, more like a starter sword, don't take it in a high-end game. Or you can just take it and just look at it, just, you know, have some visual eye candy in one hand while you have some serious sword in second hand and <laughs> no, no, not really, I'm just joking, don't, don't do that, you will die unless you will use god mode like I usually do, uh, but anyhow, I really did enjoy this sword and I do recommend it because it looks amazing. It isn't really that strong, but like I said, it is a great starter sword with amazing textures and mal and I do recommend it. And yeah guys, I guess that's it for this week's episode of Scar Mouse Weekly. I hope you enjoyed it, leave a like if you did, tell me what you think about it in the comments, subscribe for more Fallout, Skyrim and Titanfall content and I will see you next time.